Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial for Motion Matching for Unity. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at blend spaces and what they can do for us. Now, I've disabled the blend spaces in the demo scene that we're watching right now, and we might be able to see a few discrepancies. We're looking particularly at the arcing run animations and how abrupt they have now become. We're either fully tilting to one side or we're running straight. Let's have a quick look, see if we can get that. Going. So you can see how it snaps between running straight and then running at that uh, arcing angle. And it's quite not very nice. What about all the stuff in between? Now that is where blend spaces come in. Now, if you don't know what a blend space is, it's basically the same as a blend tree in Mechanum. However, we don't use them as much in motion matching because a lot of the time blending is uh, you know is destructive it doesn't maintain the quality of the animation and that's why we're not going to use it as much we're only going to use it for these arcing runs because when we blend between running straight and an arcing run we don't actually lose much quality and that's why it's kind of okay to do it now this is obviously a technique that you can only use with cut clips of course uh, you could combine motion matching and a couple of cut clips to get the same effect um, but yeah so let's have a look at how we can set that up. Let's actually go back into our project and re-enable that on our demo scene um, so that we can see what the actual desired effect is. All right, so let's hit play and we'll see what the difference is now. So now we're getting much smoother kind of arcs it's we're getting the in-betweens a lot more. We can still see the change between running forward and that's more just because of the quality of the animations, but it's generally much smoother and we get a whole bunch of more range in between those arcs. And it works a lot better, especially with uh, quality mocap cut clips uh, from say Kubold. It works really well. We can have a look at those later as well. But let's have a quick look on how this is all set up. So if we go to our demo scene preprocessor and we go to blend spaces, I can double click to open an editor. Uh, I recommend having a view of the scene so we can also preview this. So what is this? This is a 2D space and it's normalized. We have one on the top, negative one on the bottom, negative one on the left and one on the right. Now typically we have a bunch of animations within this space and wherever our current position is in the space, it will calculate a blend between all of these uh, points. So let's preview that and have a look. So the red is the position that we're currently at and if I move the red position I can turn snapping off in the top right here for a smoother look. We can get a whole bunch of different in-between animations just like so. So now we're getting all these in-between animations we have this blend space. Now these animations themselves can be moved around. I'll turn snapping back on and we can position them in 3D space. I'm obviously only using the X axis here. So just be aware of that. And, uh, but we can use the Y for some other things. Um, most of the time I don't use it, but let's have a look. How can we create this? Let's go over here and grab an animation. Now we want to start with whatever is our middle animation, which will be our run forward loop. We drag it in and that creates a new blend space. We can then drag in other animations and just drop them into the blend space wherever we want, move them around as we desire. Um, so we'll add in the left, that was a left one here. This one's gonna be over here, a left wide, and we need a right narrow. Bang, so that is that set up. Now, the only way, it's, other thing we need to do is we need to change the type of the blend space. Now, the blend spaces have gone through a few iterations with motion matching for Unity. And um, so the original way that blend spaces were used is not the recommended way to use it. And that's with a standard blend space. This actually sets up the blend space at runtime and you can change the position at runtime. The problem is we can't really match between that. So what we need to do is we need to use a scatter space. Now I'm only using the X axis here, so I'm going to use a scatter X. So we're not going to worry about doing it for the top. So what does this scatter blend space mean? It means that what we do is we're going to pre-process data for this loop at intervals along this X axis. So the interval is 0.05. So let me set this to 0.05, the snap. 
we're going to analyze a pose of this loop and then that 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 loop etc 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 all the way along now this might seem like a lot but compared to mocap data it's not really much but we're going to get all these little individual points all along the blend space and at runtime instead of having the heavy calculations of calculating blend space positions we're just going to have these pseudo uh, blend spaces where we're blending a whole bunch of animations based on pre-processed data scattered along this thing. Now, if we had y-axis, we could also scatter in the y by doing that. Or if we only had y-axis, we could scatter along the y. This may, might sound confusing, but basically we're taking this blend space and we're setting up a whole bunch of poses along the uh, for you know each pose interval at each different point along the blend space. And so we can jump to those specific points in the blend space rather than actually moving around the blend space position at runtime. There is a use for that still, uh, but we'll get into that later. Okay, before we move on, I just want to have a look at what the output of our blend space or our scatter blend space is going to be as in terms of the trajectory. Now, we're looking at the character in the standalone demo and I've just got debug poses on and I've gone to the... Um, I've gone to the blend space part of the animation and I just want to show you as I go through the animation we're getting all these loops and you can see that as I go through it it's getting uh, wider and wider and wider and wider until it reaches the middle and then it's going over to the other side and we're getting all these nice little interview intervals of the arcs all the way along until it's fully tight and then that's kind of the end of our blend space right there and we've got the same thing with the walks we've got a really tight walk and then it loosens up straight and then we've got a really tight walk in the other way so you can see the effect of the blend space there we're getting all these lovely in-betweens that we couldn't get without the blend space or without proper good mocap data thank you for watching I hope you have enjoyed this video and you've learned a bit about how to set up blend spaces for locomotion. I've decided to break up the blend spaces into two video tutorials to keep them a bit shorter. In the next blend space tutorial, we're going to look at how we can use blend spaces and play them explicitly to do specific things like falling or gliding animations where locomotion doesn't really make sense. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.